we are asked to use the empirical rule to answer the following questions. We first want to determine the mean. One of the properties of the normal distribution is that the mean, median, and mode are all equal and located at the center of the distribution. So notice 64 is at the center, and therefore 64 is the mean, as well as the median and the mode. To determine the standard deviation, we analyze the horizontal axis. Because we're told the empirical rule applies, and notice how almost the entire graph is cut horizontally into six equal subintervals. Each subinterval represents one standard deviation. More specifically, approximately 68% of the data falls plus or minus one standard deviations from the mean, which in our case is from 61 to 67. So if we label 64 mu for the mean, 67 is equal to mu plus one sigma, or the mean plus one standard deviation, and 61 is equal to mu minus one sigma, or the mean minus one standard deviation. And since 64 plus three is equal to 67, and 61 minus three is equal to 61, mu, the standard deviation, is equal to three. Next, we're asked to determine the percent of the test scores between 61 and 67, which we just used to determine the standard deviation. And since this interval is plus or minus one standard deviation from the mean, approximately 68% of the test scores are between 61 and 67, and therefore part C is 68%. Next, we're asked to find the percent of test scores between 58 and 70. Notice 58 is two standard deviations below the mean, and 70 is two standard deviations above the mean, and therefore we can label 58 as mu minus two sigma, and we can label 70 as mu plus two sigma. So this interval is plus or minus two standard deviations from the mean, and the empirical rule indicates approximately 95% of the data falls plus or minus two standard deviations from the mean. Part D is 95%. Part E, what percent of test scores are between 55 and 73? Notice 55 is three standard deviations below the mean. So we can label 55 mu minus three sigma. And 73 is three standard deviations above the mean, which we can label mu plus three sigma. So the interval from 55 to 73 is plus or minus three standard deviations from the mean, and therefore approximately 99.7% of the data falls between these values. So D is 99.7. For part F, we're asked to find the percent of test scores between 64 and 67, which is this interval here. Well, we know 68% of the test scores are between 61 and 67, because this interval is plus or minus one standard deviation from the mean. And due to the symmetry of the bell curve, half is on the left and half is on the right, 68% divided by two is 34%, which means 34% of the scores are between 61 and 64, and 34% of the test scores are from 64 to 67, which is what we are looking for for part F. For part G, what percent of test scores are less than 64? Notice 64 is the mean as well as the median, so we're looking for the percent of test scores that are below the mean, which are all the test scores over here. We have to be careful not to just rely on the empirical rule, because the empirical rule only accounts for 99.7% of the test scores. We need to remember that 64 is the median, and therefore 50% of the test scores are less than 64, and 50% are more than 64, and therefore part G is 50%. And for part H, we want to find the percent of test scores less than 67, which means we now add this interval here, and we know 34% of the test scores are between 64 and 67, and we know 50% of the test scores are less than 64. 50% plus 34% is equal to 84%. 84% of the test scores are less than 67. I hope you found this helpful.